Now this Friday, we all are gathering at the Tigon Studios for this great audition that's going on. It's an audition to unearth people who can sing. Now if you know you can sing or you can rap, God has given it to you, but you haven't gotten the opportunity to show it to the world, it's time for you to do so. We're making it easy for you. And so we say gather at Tigon Studios for this great audition to your greatest career. Yes, that's what I'll say. Because maybe nobody has you know, seen you to help you unearth the talent. But Joy Prime says we are doing it. And we are doing it in the name of cues and lyrics. So we hope to see you there. 9.30 a.m. sharp. Don't be late. Don't get there late and say, oh, my goodness, oh, there was traffic. If you know there's traffic on your own, make sure you leave early. But we want to see you. So if you can sing, you can rap, and you're looking for somebody to help you to tell the world about your story, just make sure that you are at Tigon Studios on Friday. I'll be there and I hope to see you there. It's time for us to have our big interview. Now, talking about that, anytime we have the big interview, we have conversations that concern you and I. And uh, what I say is that we make sure that we inspire you to get to know those who are making strides in the world. And maybe that could also change you to make a strive in the world as well. So today, I will introduce my guest to you. But before then, we know that Easter is just around the corner, right? And since Easter is just around the corner, ICGC is gathering for this great Easter convention. And anytime it's Easter, we know that heavens smile on us. And as heaven smiles on us, we all together for this big event. One second, okay. So... What I'll tell you this particular Easter is to make sure that you are pre you are present at ICGC Holy Ghost Temple, uh, Calvary, Calvary Temple for this great event. And make sure that it's, a, it's an encounter. Uh, it's this Easter Sunday evening. You get ready for three hours of non-stop praising and worship in the presence of the Lord as we celebrate his presence and his resurrection at the 2023 edition of He Lives concert. Uh, this year, the Ultimate Easter Musical Concert will feature the launch of the debut album, of CT Praise dubbed The Encounter, and it promises to be an unforgettable night. The date is the 9th of April, that's 2023, and the doors open at 5 p.m., so don't be late. Performing live will be the CT Praise and a host of other performances. The event is proudly brought to you by ICGC Christ Temple East uh, Ligon with media support from Joy FM, Hit FM, Joy Prime, Joy News, and MyJoyOnline.com. Be sure to stream and listen to CT Praise brand new single Lala Dance Mudley out on all streaming platforms and right here on your favorite station as well. Like I told you earlier, it's time for us to have our big interview. Before I introduce my guest to you, I want you to take a look at this video. Called for many. Stay tuned. So you've seen my guest for today. He's seated right here in the studio. And of course, I'm actually impressed with what he's done so far with his life. If you know a lot about him, you'll be more surprised that he is the very first uh, youngest professor in mathematics and the first professor in full pure mathematics right here in Ghana. So he's broken two records, not just one, but two records. Now let me tell you a little bit about him, okay? Now this man actually started nursing training. His parents told him to go into nursing training. On his way, he got an accident, and so he lost one arm. When he lost it, he was a right-hand man, and so it broke the chances of him going into nursing college. He had to learn how to use his left hand. He learned it within three months, and that is when he went into teacher training. He came out as a teacher. He didn't stop there. He decided to go to the university to pursue mathematics, and he's here today. Professor Kwara Nantoma, yeah. how are you? I'm okay, by God's grace. And thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, too, for the opportunity. You are so inspiring. You're so... I don't know what to say, but when I read about you, I was shocked to the core. Yeah. You didn't grow up in Ghana. You were born, you didn't grow up, sorry, in Accra. Yeah. You, were, you, you grew up in the northern part of Ghana. Exactly. You were born there, raised there, did everything there. Some people are there. Yes, we know that there are privileges that 
people who live in the urban areas uh, get where the people in the rural areas don't get. You didn't get, but you have become the very first youngest professor in mathematics, first professor in pure maths. How did you do it? Uh, it was just uh, by determination, uh, trying to uh, reach where others could not reach. And I think uh, part of the motivation was as a result of the terrible accident I had. Uh, I was challenged that the mere fact that we have left and right is just by human notation. If I decide to call this hand right hand, it becomes my right hand. So from there, I realized that no, that shouldn't be a challenge. Uh, and mathematics in a way, uh, pure math for that matter, uh, suited my purpose because it has little to do with practicals that I would have been challenged uh, with the single hand. So in pure maths, uh, it was okay to go. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We, we sit here, we say math is so difficult, but you're saying it's not challenging, it's, it's the way to go. Now, along the way, you were supposed to go to nursing school. So when you were growing up, what were your dreams, your aspirations? I wanted to become a teacher. So the nursing training college idea came as a result of some well-meaning people and my dad. Let me be honest, I finished secondary school without knowing so much about the tertiary institutions. All I wanted to be was a teacher. So upon uh, that advice, I changed my mind and I wanted to pursue the nursing career. But God being so good, <laughs> I ended up being a teacher I wanted to be. Mm, a bigger teacher, <laughs> like you say. Yes. Now let's talk about growing up. Okay. You said you didn't know much about tertiary life. How was growing up like? How were your parents, what were they doing? the schools that you attended. Take us through. Yeah, um, I started my primary education at Nalergu Baptist Primary from 1988 to 1993. Then from there I proceeded to Nasiriga Roman Catholic Junior Secondary School from 1994 to 1996. Thereafter I moved to Nalergu secondary school from 1997 to 1999. Then from 2000 to 2003, I uh, moved to Baga Baga Teacher Training College, where I had teachers set A. Then from 2003 to 2007, I studied at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, where I had my Bachelor of Science in Mathematics. Uh, thereafter, as part of uh, my national service, I was picked as a teaching assistant uh, to serve in the mathematics department of KNUST. And I did that between 2007 to 2008. Then from 2008, I enrolled in the Enfield program in pure mathematics at KNUST. Then I graduated in 2010 with Master of Philosophy in Mathematics with specialization in functional analysis, which is an aspect of pure mathematics. Uh, then in 2011, I got appointment to lecture at University for Development Studies, uh, where I was required to serve a probation period of two years. So after the probation period, I enrolled in a PhD program, then in 2017, I graduated with PhD mathematics with specialization in mathematical analysis. Uh, so thereafter, the research continues. Mm. Uh, then that led to me promoted to senior lecturer, from senior lecturer to associate professor, then now to full professor of mathematics. Let's walk us through your parents. What did they do? What were they doing? Were your parents a middle class uh, parents? Were they, you know, the low class? Were they the high class? What were they? Yeah, my dad, uh, Chief J.B. Nantoma, was a teacher. Uh, I think his level was just the those days, uh, teacher training college. Then my mom has not been uh, to school before. 
things. He can read, he can write. So that's a level of uh, education with regards to my parents. Now, is it because your dad was a teacher? That's why you wanted to be a teacher? Uh, not necessarily. I was so passionate about the teaching profession. Mm. Uh, start from, I mean, right from primary school. What made you passionate about it? Yeah, the joy after uh, you guide somebody to know something that uh, was not uh, known previously. You know, there's, there's this inner satisfaction. If you are able to successfully explain something to the understanding of another. So it was purely based on this inner satisfaction. Along the way, of course, you were told to go to nursing training. That meant that you were going to divert from the teaching into nursing training. Did it throw you off a little bit? Were you happy that you had to go into nursing? Or you said to yourself, I don't want to do it, but my parents says I should, so I will. I wasn't happy, but as I mentioned earlier, I didn't know at that time uh, what the various aspects of tertiary uh, schools were. So this was in a way some form of pressure coming from all angles. Oh, go and do nursing, go and do nursing with this result, go and do nursing. So eventually I agreed uh, to do the nursing. But at that stage I didn't know so much. How did the accident happen? Walk us through. Yeah, uh, it was on the day of the interview for the nursing training. And that was on 19th uh, July 2000. So on our way to Boku in Upper East Region, and we are in Northern Region by our then Northern Region. Now let go was the then Northern Region. So uh, when we set off, I observed that the driver was over speeding. I spoke to him, I think twice or thrice. The first one I mentioned, and I seated just three seats, the third seat behind the driver. That was where I was seated. So I told him that uh, he was over speeding. Then he slowed down. Uh, then when we were getting to Nakpanduri, uh, I realized that he was still over speeding. Then I spoke to him again. Then some of the few passengers turned and told me that oh, I should beware that they also have lives. It appears I was bothering them. Then when we were descending the uh, to the Nakpanduri Scarp. In fact, it's a dangerous place. It's a, a, like this, uh, when you are getting to Suhum, those mountains there. I told him on it, uh, for the third time that he was over speeding. And I asked whether he, he has ever used that road before. Uh, he didn't mind me. Then eventually, uh, the car crashed there into that deep valley. Uh, so several people died on the spot, so thankfully, I survived it. Mm. Yeah. Did the driver survive it as well? Yeah, I think he did, but I can't remember exactly. I remember during uh, when I was admitted at the hospital after the accident, uh, I don't know whether it was a driver or the driver mate came to uh, greet me. Then I told uh, those who were taking off, uh, care of me that I didn't want to see him. Because I told him three times, but he didn't listen. So I don't know whether he actually survived that accident or not. <laughs> you are a full professor now of you, mathematics. You've broken two records, let me put it like that. Okay. Will you say that this accident attributed to you breaking these two records? Maybe by divine means, I'll say yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think I'll say yes. Mm. Because in the first place, I didn't want to go to the nursing training. So I can see it as God's own way of stopping me. Uh, and I can't say yes. Maybe I have reached where I am, not because of the accident, but because of God's mm. direction. His intervention <laughs> there. Yes. So yes. when you went to the university as well, uh, your grade that you used to graduate, I know it's come up a few times, why you, didn't, you were not given a first class, because a 69 point Eight six was it? Yes, please. Sixty nine point eight six. You should have given a first class, but you were given a second class. Did that break you? Yeah, uh, I actually noticed this on the transcript that was issued by the university. The transcript that describes uh, the classes or the key that describes the classes is indicated uh, 
from 60 to 69 was second upper, 70 to 100 uh, was first class. So I happened to score 69.86. Uh, so this idea wouldn't have been an issue if it has been indicated on the transcript that 60 to 69.99, I wouldn't have an issue. But once it's 60 to 69, it means I was above the second class level, second class upper level, mm -hmm. and also below the first class level. I was below the uh, first class level by 0 0.14, I should think then uh, above. So if you were to look at it, ideally I should have been awarded first class, but I don't have any problem with that. Did you try to contest it? No, at that time uh, my thoughts were not like today. If it were today, I would have. Oh, really? Yes, I would have asked either they properly capture the skill on the transcript uh, to solve that issue or award me the class that uh, merits that uh, score. Now, as a professor, you also are in the university now. Are you going to make any changes with regards to these, you know, things on transcripts? I think uh, they are properly captured. Now? Yes. Okay. So the, the KNUSC issue, I don't know, but I, as long as my transcript is concerned, uh, either there was an error in the way it's captured on the transcript with regards to the university skill. Okay. Or better still, they didn't uh, check well to properly place me. Mm. That's what I would say. But, still but currently, I don't know whether that issue has been resolved on the transcript. Okay. Yes. Mm. You haven't had anybody complain yet about it? No, not, not to my knowledge. Okay. Now, it didn't stop you. You went ahead to do uh, MPhil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Walk us through the journey of going to do MPhil. Yeah, the Enfield, I think when I was a teaching assistant, I had, apart from going to assist mm -hmm. in lectures, I had enough time to read about the various areas of mathematics. And I fell in love with the pure mathematics, which is uh, not liked by so many because of its abstractions. So I had an opportunity to really learn about these areas. Uh, Particularly, I studied functional analysis under the supervision of Dr. Edward Prempe. He's still alive, strong and kicking from KNUST. So I think that uh, triggered my interest in the mathematical analysis. Uh, and I, I think I graduated on time. Amongst our year group in KNUST, I think we were only three or five who graduated in the June graduation of uh, 2010. Uh, the others joined in the December graduation. So I can say uh, it was okay. I worked within time and I graduated on time. You know, some people have come out to say that you should have been the valedictorian at that time. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, that was the PhD. The PhD. Yes. Mm. I, I would agree in a way, but still leave the rest to the university management. That was University for Development Studies. Mm. Uh, from my PhD thesis, I published 13 scholarly articles from the PhD work alone. 13. And this is captured in the PhD thesis I submitted to the university. Also, I submitted my final bound copy of the thesis to the university in October 2016, but I was scheduled to graduate in April 2017. So the date on my PhD certificate is 2017. Elsewhere, uh, September, sorry, October to December, November, and we had November graduation that year. I don't know why I was not part of the November graduation. Did you try to find out? Uh, no, 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 not really, not really. I didn't. But all these things are on record. The date that is captured in the thesis I submitted to the university, it was in October. And these 13 research publications too are captured in the thesis. So uh, people may be right to ask why I was not made the valedictorian 
but I always say maybe they have their own criteria of mm. selecting that person. So I don't have an issue with it. The time that you were supposed to have, be, uh, you know, be graduated and uh, they didn't let you graduate and they pushed it to the following year. Did you feel somebody was actually trying to sabotage you at that time? No, please. Uh, what I uh, felt was that the graduate board meets. Uh, and I think before graduation, the graduate board is supposed to look at all those who are due for graduation. The information I got was that the time I submitted it, graduate board had already met okay. to consider those who were to graduate in November of the 2016. So that was the information I got. So I don't have, think somebody personally mm. uh, wanted to sabotage me. You know, as you speak, you speak about pure math and all of that. People want to know what really pure math is because uh, in our secondary schools, we know of elective math, we know of core math. So break it down for us. Which one is pure math? Which one is elective math? Okay. Uh, I think at the secondary school level, uh, you can't be talking of pure mathematics. Mm. Maybe elective math is yeah. fine. Uh, those who are doing it as an elective uh, versus they call mathematics. But broadly speaking, mathematics is categorized into pure and applied. Recently, we have some, or some mathematicians seem not to agree with just these two classifications. Uh, applied mathematicians or applied mathematics involves the use of tools from pure mathematics to solve real life problems. Then pure mathematicians create those tools. That is what we do. So pure mathematics is all about creating the mathematical concepts uh, for applied mathematicians to use. So we actually go into abstractions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you understood what he said. <laughs> well, if you are not a mathematician, you might struggle to understand what he's talking about. Uh, for those who know about pure maths, you might know and understand. For those who know about only elective maths and core maths too, you might be a little bit confused. But this is a big interview where I'm speaking with the very first uh, Ghanaian professor in pure mathematics and also the youngest mathematics professor in Ghana. So if you say the youngest, I mean, before you became the youngest, how old was the other person? Whoever you took over I, from as I, the youngest. I really do not know. Uh, but uh, um, I will be uh, 42 in May. Okay. Uh, as we speak, I don't know of a full professor of mathematics in Ghana, who is in active service currently. Okay. Yeah, so those uh, people, even though I don't I know their exact age, I'm not sure any of them would have even been 45. No, I don't think. Oh, wow. Yes. I know of those, some who became full professors, yes, few months to retirement. People actually complain so much about mathematics being so difficult. Why is that so? You are now, you know, a professor, so you should be able to break it down to us. Yes, uh, that is a general misconception, and we hear it everywhere. Uh, rather, mathematics is uh, one of the easiest or simplest disciplines you can think of. Mathematics is just a way of explaining or describing a situation precisely using mathematical expressions, formulas, or equations. And this subject is governed by rules. It goes with logic. So mathematics will become difficult if you don't want to go by its rules. Otherwise, everything about mathematics is simple, mm. straightforward. And the mathematics we do here is the same mathematics that is done globally. In fact, mathematics is the language that is spoken globally. If I pick a mathematics script that is written in Russian, I should be able to understand the mathematics. Really? Yes. Even though you don't read Russia? Yes. I should be able to understand the mathematics because we have standardized symbols notation we use to express or describe 
uh, situations in mathematics. What an interesting conversation. A few messages coming in. You can also join us by sending in your messages. Uh, good morning, host. Professor is a teacher of difference. He is firm, principled. Above all, blending the IT in his teaching as too much. Uh, it's too much, sorry. My professor is advanced calculus and mathematical analysis. Congratulations. This is from Joseph in Nadawuli, Upper East, Upper West region. Sorry. You know him. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> he seems to be enjoying it. Hey, my name is Buhari Abdul Ghaniwu, a former student of Professor Kwara, and I also studied pure mathematics. I knew he would get to where he has gotten to. And as a former student, I'm proud of my professor. Nice one. He actually makes maths uh, easy if you think about it. Hi, uh, this is Mbepe, Mbebe, uh, Noah. Uh, professor Kwara Nantoma was my real analysis lecturer very inspiring man and discipline a man that will give you what you merit as far as examination is concerned but i had a plus in both real analysis one and two he was very proud of me anyway uh, currently i'm an elective math teacher in shs level now okay looks like you're making a lot of impact yeah. prof you merit this honor after 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 being under you, after being under you as a student, I enjoyed your lectures, Prof. We are proud of you. By Amoga Noah. All right. Um, hello. Good morning. I feel inspired and grateful listening to a mathematical voice and hands that made me. I was a student in analysis, real and complex. Professor Kwara Nantuma is a genius from Samo Abendigo. Uh, he's an inspiration to us, the lovers of mathematics. Like he said, God has his own way, directing us to the right path. Big ups, prof. Congrats, boss. My name is Awini uh, Maxwell. Good morning. I'm really enjoying your show. But we don't know where he is lecturing now. If you can capture that for motivational purpose. Okay, prof, where are you lecturing now? I'm uh, lecturing at CKT Dam University of Technology and Applied Sciences, which is known for short as CKT Utahs uh, in Navrongo Upper East Region. Mm. Is that where you come from? Do you come from Navrongo? Uh, my hometown is Nalergu, North East Region. Okay. But I'm now based in Navrongo. Now based in Navrongo. Work, yes. Okay, great. Uh, hi, good morning to you and your guest, Professor Kwara Nantoma. I'm pleased and proud to be listening to you. Uh, the youngest professor uh, is sharing to the whole world from ED, all student of NAS. Okay. Masha Allah, Professor Kwara's achievement is highly commendable. May Allah bless him more in his endeavors. I'm Shaplang. All right, so you can also send in your messages and let's get interactive. Of course, my guest for today is Professor Kwara Nantoma. He is actually the youngest professor in mathematics in Ghana and also the very first professor in pure mathematics right here in Ghana. So you are, you are lecturing in the north. Yes, Have please. you been there for long? Yes. For how long? I think throughout my life. Mm. It was the education that, that brought, brought me okay. down south. Would you want to uh, come down south to lecture one day? Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay <laughs> over there. <laughs> you prefer <laughs> there? Yes. I think uh, CKT Utah is a young uh, but vibrant institution coming up. And it won't be so long. We'll be able to wrap shoulders with the traditional universities in terms of our graduate products and the quality of programs uh, run over there. Is that why you want to stay there? Yes, I uh, would want to be part of the uh, story towards the development of that new university. Mm. It used to be a campus of the then uh, University for Development Studies, now a full university on its own. So it's just at the infant stage. I think it's better I stay to grow it a bit. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> now, people from the north are really, really smart. What makes yeah. them so smart? Uh, possibly the environment uh, from primary up to maybe university. Environment, I'm referring to infrastructure that supports learning. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, growing up, up to BEC level, we didn't have electricity in Nalergo. Now the regional capital of northeast region. So we use lanterns to prepare for BEC. And as part of my admission uh, list for secondary school, lantern was part of it. If you were to report at secondary school first year, as part of the lantern, yeah, lantern, yes, kerosene lantern. 
So in secondary school, there's no light? Yes, now there is, but that time we didn't. There was a generator, they occasionally on, maybe up to 9 p.m. then off it. So lantern was a requirement. So I think uh, this environment, I see it like if you are training, uh, learning how to run 100 meters at the sea, uh, where we have sandy soil, uh, then when you train in that environment, then eventually you get a normal field. You should be able to run faster than your colleagues. Mm. So that is how I see it in relation to people from northern backgrounds. All right. Is there infrastructure? There are so many messages coming in, I must say, a lot. Uh, please greet Professor for me. We, the people of Nalurugu and uh, the Northeast region, is so proud of you. My name is Mohammed Alan Barnes. Okay, good morning, Mohammed. Good morning, host. My name is Gregory Antime. My professor would always, uh, mathematics to your level of understanding, no matter how weak your mathematics background is, I'm, I'm proud of you, Prof. Prof, is this to do try to break it down for them to understand? I do my best, <laughs> <laughs> having in mind the misconception mm. about mathematics. Uh, so I always try my best uh, to teach it in a way that will make it difficult for them to forget. What are some of the challenges you face along the way? Uh, one, I think the greatest challenge was to quickly learn how to write with the left hand after the accident. That was my greatest, and in fact, it has been my greatest challenge. But I was able to overcome that. So the others, even though uh, were challenges, uh, I don't really see them as such. One of them was uh, financial support towards my studies. Uh, both the MPhil and PhD, I supported my studies uh, by picking a bank loan. I never had any financial support. Even though I tried some scholarships, uh, in fact, we know our system now. I applied for get fund support for my PhD studies, but uh, I never uh, had any support from there. So you use a loan? Sure. But uh, the PhD, by then I was a staff, so I didn't feel it like the M field, mm. because by then I was on salary. So I was able to support myself. So how were you able to pay the loan of the Enfield then? Uh, the Enfield, I paid it when I became a lecturer. Right. Yes. Wow. I paid Such it. an inspirational <laughs> story. Nothing stopped you. Not even finances. Not at all. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to know how you use your left because we have to get to know for those who are struggling as well. Maybe there's somebody at home who is going through the same sure, challenge. Sure. Please greet my professor for me. Tell him to stop uh, to stop shaving. We are always proud of him. Okay, I think the person is trying to say, don't be hiding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Abu Bakari Hamida. Um, about Prof, he's very, uh, he's just unbelievable. You can't meet him and he wouldn't advise you his achievements are just real definitions of his effort he's very interesting uh, to inspire good morning please my name is Kalinin Nakibi okay from northern region ask him which tribe he is he said he's from Naluriku but they want to know which tribe you are I don't know whether the tribe is really <laughs> uh, necessary I, I was thinking the same as well yes uh Okay, if you, yeah, it's okay, let's okay. leave it like that. <laughs> Good morning, this is Bashir Mohammed. His MPhil mathematics, I'm his MPhil mathematics student. He's arguably one of the best teachers in the world. We are so proud of him. He has over 100 research papers available online. Over 100? Over 90. Over 90? Research papers, yes. Do you ever stop, walk us through your daily life. What do you do? How, how, how is it like? Uh, I teach research and mentor students. So when I'm sitting idle, I'm either listening to music or thinking about mathematics. Mm. Yeah. All the time? Yes, especially the fun aspect of mathematics. I know you love to listen to music. You play, you play, which of the instruments do you play? Uh, mouth organ. Mouth organ. Yes. Did you bring it? Ah, uh, no, it's not with me here. <laughs> you should have brought it. I suit up. Because I know you it play an instrument. me, I suit Yeah, you should I have brought up. it. Uh, good morning, this is... Ba okay, so other messages coming in. Let me quickly read it. Uh, good morning, we are proud of you, Prof, from your former student, CK Tattoos. Um, God bless you, from Hakim. All right. Congratulations, Prof. 
He taught me real analysis one and two, 2020, 2012 to 2013. And it was interesting. Thank you, Prof. Hafiz Abdul Mutalib. All right. Um, Prof taught me pure mathematics and I like his wonderful lectures and God will bless you and your family. Prof. Ghaniru uh, Mohammed Dina. All right. Um, there are so many messages coming in, I must say. Prof. Kwara's story is an inspiration to many young ones. I've learned never to give up on my dreams, irrespective of the circumstances. I'm Sheshi Frank Kwame, an MPhil student of CKT Utah. Now, Prof, okay. walk us through how you, you managed to use your left hand to write. You did it in three months, record breaking. Though. Yes, yes, uh, three months, within three months. And uh, first, uh, when it happened, I think uh, my dad and my pastor then uh, reverend peter bugri mm. uh, they really encouraged me around that uh, crucial time what my dad did was he brought me old graphic newspapers then plain seats and asked me to be writing try to copy whatever was in the graph seats uh, initially it was horrible and terrible uh, but with time i was able to write with uh, appreciable accuracy and speed and i think another statement my dad gave me a sentence that has all the alphabets uh, he, i'm sure he wanted to be sure that i'm able to write all the letters correctly and i think this helped me a lot i was practicing each time i was alone in the room i'll practice severally 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 and I think within the three months, I was okay. And I actually enrolled in Bagabaga Teacher Training College when I was still learning how to write. <laughs> uh, by then, the wound was still healing. Uh, that was first, the accident happened in 19th July. And by 1st November, I reported at Bagabaga Teacher Training College. Yes. <laughs> Nothing stopped you? Nothing. More messages coming in. I'm Bernard Amponsadazi. Professor Kwara has been an inspiration to us. I was a student and his impact in my life is immeasurable, right? Um, I'm a former student of functional analysis. He helped me to have a desire for mathematics. I did bachelor degree in mathematics education at UDS under his supervision. My name is Desmond Apolala Wendam from Navrongo. Good morning and God bless you, sir. He used to visit my school in Nalurugu SHS. He was interested to sit in, in his class. He has capacity to be where he is. I'm Ali Dahamani from Yogoba. Okay, so today, please pardon me with the pronunciations sure. of your names. I'm trying so hard. Um, I'm gentle watching you from Gushegu. When are we taking Gary and Beans? Pro please greet Professor for me. Tell him to stop sharing. Okay. Prof, I think somebody wants to eat Gary and beans with you. Is that your favorite food? <laughs> I'm sure this would be my colleague meat. <laughs> <laughs> Is I, Gary I know and beans this, your yes. favorite food though? <laughs> yes, that was our favorite that at the training college. Yes. <laughs> Why Gary and beans? I, um, among them, I think uh, we used to have this idea when you're going for the Gary and beans. Let me put it this way. Uh, you know, ladies. Mm -hmm. Ladies usually will not go on the day they are serving Gary and beans. They will go with polythene bags. After serving, they will move around to pour the leftover gari then <laughs> send it to our dormitories. Are you going to eat it? <laughs> we, we used to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure, yeah, these are uh, gentle, one of my mates, colleague mm. mates. <laughs> <laughs> so do you still enjoy the gari and beans? Uh, no, uh, this time it deceives me. Mm. I don't know whether because we are growing the system is also changing. Uh, Beans separately disturbs me, Gary too disturbs me. Otherwise, it would have still been my favorite. <laughs> so, you know, you spoke about your father helping you when, you know, it had to do with you learning how to use your left hand. Uh, will you say that uh, parents actually have a lot of influence on the success of their children? Sure, that is true. And I uh, can see that or I saw that from my parents especially the encouragement around that time. I remember when it happened, then uh, they mentioned that the way the hand was destroyed, they were going to amputate it. But then I was fully within my senses. My dad said, no, 
But I knew that they had no option because of the manner in which it was destroyed. So I could feel the pain in my parents. So eventually I tried consoling them that it was going to be all right. And this has always been in my mind that uh, I'm trying to prove to the world that uh, this, when you have a challenge, it shouldn't be the end mm. of your life. So parents, uh, they play, play their role very well and I'm grateful to them. What has always been in your mind? Is that what has gotten you to where you are today? Uh, another turn has been, I feel like a lot of people are watching me or I am a testimony to some people. So whatever I do, I have these people in mind that I don't want to fail them. Possibly, there are people in similar situations somewhere. And the fact that somebody sees that, oh, if this person is able to get masters in mathematics, oh, then surely I can do it. So I always have this feeling that I inspire people a lot, even though I don't know them. And so I can't afford to fail any of them. That has been my driving force. Wow. More messages coming in. Good morning. This is Ayeli Base Accra, uh, Isaac, sorry. I'm really enjoying your show. Is it possible to add the university he is lecturing on screen to help project the university? A, a concerned CK teachers student. <laughs> okay. It's about him. It's about him. He has actually mentioned the university, so it's all about him. Uh, good morning, Prof. Bashir Muhammad. I'm currently a teacher in SHS in Ashanti region. I salute you, Prof. May God elevate you to the highest. All right, congratulations, Prof. We are proud of you. I'm his former uh, real analysis student from Salaga, Lukman Salifu. All right, Lukman. We are so proud of you. Abubakari Lukman is my name. All right, it looks like there are a lot of Lukman who knows you. Yeah. Do you know all of them? No, please. <laughs> you know, do you I'm know, sure I would know, do you know so most of your students, though? Yes, I know them by faces. If I meet any of them somewhere, I should be able to. But for names, I easily forget. Mm. And that is understood because of the numbers. Right. The skill of mathematics is like riding a bicycle. It cannot be achieved by watching it done. It's achieved by doing it. Professor Quara. That's your quote? Exactly. Why this quote? I use that to uh, motivate and advise my students. I think that those I taught real analysis. Uh, I told them that in mathematics, there's no way you can gain the skill by watching somebody do mathematics. The only way you can gain that skill is to participate, to do it yourself. That's why I use the bicycle issue. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can watch somebody ride bicycle. Then you say, oh, now I know how to ride bicycle. You pick the bicycle to ride. No, you can't do that. The only way to learn it is to sit on the bicycle and actually practice how to ride. How many hours a day do you practice mathematics? As uh, you? Yes, I think... Uh, Sometimes it comes involuntary. Even sitting from the car coming, you'll be thinking about mathematics all over. So honestly, I think about mathematics almost throughout my life. Apart from maybe when I'm going to sleep. What time do you sleep? Uh, usually after 10. But when I have an issue or trying to uh, establish some mathematical results, it can take me beyond 12 in the night. So when you are sitting there, yeah. You just have to pick a pen and a paper and be solving mathematics. Sometimes uh, you, is a, that mathematics will be triggered by either an error somebody commits. Guess, for instance, even crossing a road. Mm. You realize that somebody is crossing the road and no, this person is not aware of mathematics. The shortest distance between any two points is the perpendicular bisector. So you don't cross a road diagonally. It gives you more space. So he said, that, no, this person could have just crossed it straightforward instead of diagonally. And I'm sure those uh, uh, in, uh, advocating for road safety, they will advise that you don't cross the road diagonally. That's exactly mathematics. <laughs> and <laughs> in fact, everything about a life is mathematics. So sometimes I think about all those things. And uh, usually you are able to actually come out with a real mathematics concept that governs that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we have to... 
You know what you are talking? I'll just ask it myself. So, eating to recalculate? <laughs> no, but the events that will lead to the food served to your table is full of mathematics. How? <laughs> For instance, let's say you are good at preparing uh, fried rice, which come with mixing proportions of certain things. These proportions is nothing but mathematics. If you can do it, let's say you are able to do it for three people, then now this is a mathematical problem. Mm -hmm. You have a party where you are required to serve 50 people. At what proportion will you now measure the components in order to prepare a fried rice that you can use to serve these 50 people? That is mathematics. Wow. So, are they trust mathematicians? Ah, uh, unconsciously they apply yeah. mathematics, oh. but that doesn't make them mathematics. Okay, they right. use mathematics. More messages coming in, quite interesting. Uh, Joseph actually, Joseph Salma Wobel said, "Thank you for being one of the few mathematics teachers I have met." Okay, uh, <clears throat> the messages there. Prof. Quara is my mentor. He makes mathematics teaching very real. My name is Cynthia A. Congratulations, Prof. My mentor. He makes mathematics teaching very easy. Okay, Cynthia. Um, this one says, uh, uh, Ma, okay, so many of us perceive mathematics as a challenge, but Prof. is an inspiration with the determination. Failure definitely cannot dismantle the flag of success. Inshallah, I'm Barhatu in Kumasi. And uh, Rosalie looking beautiful as always. Thank you so much, Bahatu. Uh, hello, Professor Kwara. Uh, Professor is a motivation for me and other young mathematics lovers. He taught me real analysis in one and two and functional analysis. I'm so proud of you, Moses Apega Ayibo. Now, Prof, you know, let me take it down to okay. our younger people, sure. especially the young ones. They are the ones who say, I don't love mathematics. What makes them don't like math? It is the way mathematics is handled at the lower level, or how mathematics is taught. Just uh, a statement can take somebody away from studying mathematics. And we encounter this every day. And also, we have uh, people teaching mathematics just because there is no mathematics teacher. Those are the problems. So at the lower level, they are not actually prepared very well uh, towards studying mathematics. And this issue will follow them up to the basic, secondary, and up to the tertiary level. So the problem of mathematics is actually the way it is taught at these various levels. What can we do about it then? Advocacy. Uh, and I started something like that up there trying to let students appreciate mathematics even at the very basic level. Mm -hmm. And I have this thing I always call the fun aspect of mathematics. So usually I take them through those exercises. Uh, then in the end, they will like it. How is it fun? What, how do you do it to make it fun? For instance, uh, there's something we call mathematics. Mathematics that look like magic. So until that concept is unveiled, you will see it to be magic. Mm. For instance, let's say I can ask two people to throw their little die twice, then record the numbers they got. Then I'll just ask them one or two questions. Then I should be able to tell them the numbers they got. That is the mat magics. Also, these are calendar, calculations, uh, even at the lowest level is just modular arithmetic. And I take students through those activities. I was impressed. I tried it at a girls' secondary school that they were able to mention the value within three seconds. Oh, wow. Yes, and you need just mod, 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 modulo four and modulo seven to do that. That's a fun aspect. Together with another interesting staff, I usually uh, entertain my students at every Valentine's Day. I'll give them a mathematical function 
uh, whose plot will be the love symbol. Hey. Yes. And you can actually plot and get a love symbol. Exactly. Get the wow. heart symbol. Prof, let me get, like, ask the last question so okay. that we can go. Okay. And this one actually is about our curriculum. Current curriculum, uh, you know, system with regards to what the students of today are studying. What do you make of it? It's very problematic. Uh, the current curriculum, uh, we are aware that uh, for some instance, at some instances, the country is not even ready in terms of textbooks to go with the curriculum. Mm. So there should be a deliberate effort uh, to highlight or yeah highlight mathematics throughout these levels, and we can do that by going back to the roots from primary. Uh, revise a curriculum to properly introduce people to mathematics at that level so that by the time they get to university level, the fear of mathematics would have gone and the interest uh, would be seen everywhere. All right, Prof, thank you so much for being here today. We are super grateful. Uh, your people are watching your final words to them in the weekend, girl. Uh, yes. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share this little experience with uh, global listeners. Uh, then to uh, tell everyone that CKT Utah is also coming up strongly. Whoever is interested in studying mathematics at any level uh, can come up there. We have the men uh, to train you to become the mathematician you want to be. And another thing, I don't know what I have opportunity to clarify that. Uh, a different context, I saw somebody ask the question that, uh, how come you are the first full professor of mathematics? How about Professor Aluti? How about Professor Achampo? And my emphasis is always being full professor of pure oh, mathematics. Right. Professor Aluti of blessed memory and Professor Achampo, I respect them. I even call them my academic grandfathers. But indeed, their work was based on mathematical physics, which is considered applied mathematics. So I still, I just want to put Let that record clear. And in fact, but it will even be unfair to try to compare me to those great people. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank being you. here today. We are super grateful. And our guest for today has been Professor Kwara Nantoma. He is actually the youngest professor in mathematics and the first professor in pure mathematics right here in Ghana. Prof, thank you so much for being here today. People want to know, when are we going to stop where X is and where Y is? Because we, we are still looking for X and Y. We will continue to search for <laughs> X and Y. <laughs> Because the X represent any real life situation. Okay, and uh, Y represents. Exactly. So <laughs> when you are looking for X, we'll continue to, and until we cease to encounter problems in real life. We'll still look for X. Yes, so the X you are finding are actually solutions of a certain real life situation. Let's not forget that any real life situation can be modeled into a mathematical function or formula. Mm. And the solution of that function becomes solution of that problem. All right, thank you so much for being here. If thank you are you crossing so. the road, maybe you are looking for X or maybe you are looking for Y, but make sure you cross the road safely. <laughs>